who was the most charismatic person you've ever met? Oh, okay. So one of my favourite people that I've met, um, because I was a really big fan, was well, Dickie Attenborough. You got, you can't. I've got to mention Dick, Richard Attenborough. Yeah. I just remember him. He's so tiny, and he held my hand for the entire interview. And I remember thinking. I can't put the sound up on my microphone because he's holding my hand. And I was just praying that I had good sound level. <laughs> and and that, so that's a really quick answer. I mean, I've, I've met Danny DeVito. I've met um, Lenny Kravitz. I've met Joanna Lumley. What was Joanna but, Lumley like? I mean, a lot of people yeah, love Ab Fab. I, I loved Absolutely Fabulous. And I've always loved Joanna Lumley. And I've always admired her. And I've got to say, when I met her, it was a charity thing. And it was when you could smoke inside. And she literally had a cigarette in a holder inside drinking a glass of champagne and, and and it was it was i don't think she was the head person of the charity i think she was more of a guest so she could just come and she literally called me sweetie oh hi sweetie hi sweetie oh darling it was a husky like, voice yeah and i said can i interview you she went yeah of course you can sweetie and i just remember thinking oh, you are amazing and she's tall and she was blonde and tall and slim and wafting around the room she really was dynamite and, and not that many people are dynamite in real life when you meet them well what so makes George, her dynamite what, what what was the secret do you think to to her charisma well i think it's what i said to boris johnson earlier love your audience a little bit more than yourself she had an air of generosity about her mm. an air of effortless confidence and that's what makes a good leader is when you don't have to force your personality. You don't have to be the centre of attention. You're just effortlessly owning that space and you're being very generous to the people around you. You're loving the people around you. Yeah. And you're smiling and you're letting them in your space. Yes. And, um, and I would say that's the, that's the kind of key. So I have met um, George Clooney in real life, right? Yeah. And, and it was very funny because he was sitting at a table with a baseball cap on and we... We, we were expecting an entourage just a long time ago. It was, I think it was even, he was probably just finishing in ER at the time. So it was before even, you know, his, his massive film career. Mm. Um, and we, were, we went to interview him at Planet Hollywood. And we thought he was late because we were expecting the entourage to turn up because George Clooney was the hunk of the moment. Yeah. And he was sitting there with his baseball cap on. And he could listen to, he was listening to our conversation and, you know, the paparazzi were going, oh, typical of, you know, typical of the Hollywood stars, they're always late, you know, <laughs> complaining about him. And he was sitting there and then he was like, hi guys, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember thinking, gosh, he's quite small. He's not really that good looking in real life. <laughs> oh, really? The... Yeah, it was very nice. But I know I mentioned George Clooney because quite often people say, you know, if you were walking into a networking event, how would George Clooney behave if he was walking into a networking event? Would he be worried about what people think of him? Would he be worried about people coming up to him? No, because he's effortlessly confident. He's effortless. And that's because he, he's, he's being himself. He's comfortable with himself, right? Yeah, yeah. He's comfortable with himself and he's got that beautiful, warm smile and warm eyes. I think Joanne Lumley had that warmth. She's very warm and she's funny. So yeah. she's tall, elegant really funny with loads of warmth and actually on my final tip about speaking like a leader and being a good leader yeah. is that you want to have power so high status and that's to do with your posture it's to do with the way you behave and it is to do with your voice as well and it's not difficult to stand powerfully and and be a powerful person but really, it's you're even more powerful if you can add warmth to that power. So for me, power and warmth is the perfect leader. Wow, that's incredible advice. Um, and you're not going to get away with this. I've got. I have to ask you two more people very quickly. One is on uh, the guy has always fascinated me, Noel Gallagher, and the other one is Boris Johnson. Okay, so Noel Gallagher, I actually did interview him. I was. I was a reporter at the time, a long time ago, just before Nebworth. And he was the lead singer of, no, not the lead singer. He was the main guitarist of Oasis with his brother, Liam Gallagher. Yeah. Liam Gallagher is a total, he literally would just put his two fingers up at you if you tried to interview him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he would never be interviewed. But Noel Gallagher was like, yeah, yeah, you can interview me. And I remember I had to interview him outside his house and I'd never been sent to anyone's house before. 
It was my first doorstepping. And I couldn't believe I had to doorstep somebody. So I went to doorstep him <laughs> and he came out of his house. I went, oh no, I've got to interview him now. So I got my, my tape recorder out, press record and just went up to him and said, hi Noel, uh, I know you've got this big concert on tomorrow. So, you know, how are you preparing? He's like, oh, you know, I'm just waiting in for the, just waiting in for the plumber because my toilet's blocked. <laughs> I was like, oh no, that's terrible. He said, yeah, I'm just going to buy a pint of milk, you know. And then I just, and then a few other fans were outside his house. In, it was in North London in St. John's Wood yeah. at the time. And a few other fans came and then he carried on talking to me. He was very generous, stopped in the street. We chatted about how he's, is he, is he nervous? He said he wasn't that nervous. They've, they've, they've been doing a sound check. And, you know, he's just checking up on which guitar he's going to take. Anyway, I had maybe, you know, five minutes of his time. And um, then I just went home because it was evening. So I went back to the, the um, studio in the morning and this was, I was making entertainment news for Capital Radio and quite a few radio stations. And we went round in the morning meeting and my editor said, so what have we got on today? You know, what's going on? And, and, he, and, and they got to me and I said, oh yes, uh, I, I interviewed Noel Gallagher. He went, what? I said, yeah, you told me to go to his house. He went, what do you mean you, what, what, what? You interviewed, you got an interview? On your own? What? What? How long? How long? How long? I went, well, pff, not that long, you know, maybe five minutes. He was like, you got an interview for five minutes. Exclusive. It's exclusive. Get me the sun. Get me the Daily Mirror. Get, get, ring up all the papers. Ring up Matthew Wright. Ring up everybody. I was like, it was only about, you know, his toilet was blocked, actually. <gasps> his <laughs> toilet was blocked. This is gold dust. And he, and, 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 and he was just going to buy a pint of milk. <gasps> he was buying a pint of milk. This is brilliant. Right, get on everything. <laughs> I remember thinking, oh, my goodness. I didn't realise that, you know, it was an exclusive. Oh, that's an exclusive. Okay, now I know what an exclusive is. So I've worked all these years. I've gone to university to get an interview in the street with some guy who's buying a pint of milk. <laughs> and that does it, yeah. A highlight of my career. Yeah. But the, the point there with Noel Gallagher is that he was really friendly, really yeah. generous, and very, very understated, you know, very down to earth. Yeah. He really didn't, he didn't have to try too hard. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. There's a common theme here, isn't it? Warmth and friendliness and generosity. Um, yeah, and, and there's a power and, and, in that. Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's really important to be power, powerful and have a high status. And, and, you know, I do quite a lot of exercises with my clients about status. We talk about status. But people think they've got to be huh, powerful. And, and women in particular kind of think, oh, no, you know, I can't be too powerful because I might come across as aggressive. Yeah. So it's really important to, to be powerful with warmth. Yeah. And finally, Boris, in, in a few words. In a few words, I mean, he, Boris Johnson is what I would call a wing it wonder. And Theresa May is somebody I would call a planarina. <laughs> <laughs> so Boris Johnson, very intelligent, not a planner. He's a wing it wonder, but it doesn't mean that he's... It means that you, you're never quite sure what you're going to get with him. And sometimes that could be quite dangerous. <laughs> yeah. But he's, he's very warm and he does like people he genuinely likes people and he genuinely likes to entertain whereas Theresa May she was absolutely planned to the letter she oh. would not go off piste she would not be budged she would not move off her agenda and which I think again I, I look at her and I think wow I don't know how you ever I don't know how you could live through being a prime minister it must have been so hard yeah but the but it's she is a bit of a turn off for the audience. Exactly. Yeah. Because definitely. she's a bit planned. Absolutely.